very good morning and welcome to Sports Recap on Hills TV. Wonderful weekend we actually saw with World Cup actions going down. Argentina, of course, have boosted the lifeline as it stands now. Canada, of course, uh, um, has lost their place as we see Germany looking out uh, for a place in the uh, round of 16 after getting one point against the Spanish side last night. I am Richard Badum with me in the studio this morning. Yes, good morning, Mr. Richard. Very good morning to good you. Good morning, viewer. Welcome to uh, Sport Recap. Of course, like I said, it's all about the World Cup. The action is already getting intense. Some teams are already leaving the World Cup. And of course, this week we'll see a continuation of games. I am Ayrton Lubin. All right, Canada became the second team to leave after Qatar. But of course, we'll surely get to that. As athletes from different parts of the country will arrive at Sabah, Delta State Capital, today and of course tomorrow, Tuesday, ahead of Wednesday's opening ceremony of the 21st National Sports Festival. Delta won the bid to host the Fiesta, which is Nigeria's version of the Olympic Games, at the end of last year edition, or the last edition in Benin City, Edo State, last year. The biannual events among the facilities built for the games are two new indoor sports hall, a swimming pool, Saturn tracks, and shooting range, all within the Stephen Keshi Stadium at Sabah, as well as a new hockey pitch at Okmanam. A total of 11,000 athletes will participate in Delta 2022 National Sports Festival, which is about 2,000 more than the number that participated at the last edition held in Edo State. The first event for that game mm -hmm. or for this, uh, the Olympics in Nigeria will be cycling come Wednesday morning. Well, I think I like uh, the new sports they've been, that have been introduced into the game. Before, we didn't see things like uh, cycling. Of course. Uh, like, the, like you said, they are just going to start. And also, the new hockey team, I think it's a, well, it's a good, it's a thumbs up for the government of for course. bringing that in. Because if you look around, how many hockey pitch do we have in Nigeria? And uh, going into that one, I think it's going to really boost the chances of having our own Nigerian uh, hockey players. And of course, the swimming pool and other uh, facilities that were put in place, I think it's a good one for the, the event. No wonder the 2,000 people more applied for this particular um, competition, bringing it total to 11,000. So it's a big event and it's getting bigger. All right, it's getting bigger. And, and of course, uh, we just hope to see the better. Will Delta retain uh, the championship? They've won it twice consecutively and now they are the host. Will they win it at home? We will to see. Before we go, what, okay. which team do you see pick, uh, picking that the win in that particular? Delta. Delta again. Delta again. They'll they'll <laughs> perform better than Edo better State. than every other state. All right then. Better. All right, let's quickly move away from that. So now to Africa, the Confederation of African Football, that is CAF, has fixed December 12th for the group stage draws of the Champions League and the Confederations Cup. Group stage draws for both inter-club competitions were initially slated for November 16th, but CAF announced a postponement via its website a day before the event. The draws will now be held almost a month after the initial date as confirmed by Africa's football governing body. Well, since killing the huddle of Al Nasir Benghazi in Libya, Rivers United, of course, uh, has been training at the Adokia Masimaka Stadium uh, in Port Harcourt while also looking forward for the money uh, spinning stage of the competition. Rivers United are in the running uh, for the second tier competition with 15 other clubs. Mm. Quickly, who do you think are likely foes among the ones we see here? Well, uh, some of the teams include uh, Mimosa, we also have Asko, Dekara of Togo, Mutene Pembe of uh, DR Congo, Debus Norris of Congo, Saint Eloy of Lipopo from DR Congo, also Future FC of Egypt, Marumo Gallant FC, uh, Pyramid of e uh, Pyramid FC of Egypt also is in that competition. TP Mezembe of Congo is also in that group. And also a young Africans are uh, from Tanzania. So in that group. I, I see Mezembe of, Co of DR Congo doing something spectacular in this particular group. Wow. Let's leave that for the same. But we'll forget That's to right. know. That's just, uh, you know, some days to come. Mm -hmm. Away from that, reports from Italy have shown that Napoli are considering offering striker Victor Simen a bumper contract following interest from top European clubs this season. 23-year-old forward's future at Patanope has been a subject of speculation following his descent form since the start of the 2022-2023 season. He has had an impressive start to the season with 10 goals and 14 appearances across all competitions. Top clubs like Real Madrid, Manchester United, Liverpool and Newcastle have reportedly shown interest in signing the prolific goal poacher. His mm. contracts end 2025-2022. Mm. Would the UC get Victor Simeon and what's the possibility of him leaving Napoli this season? Well, uh, for Victor Simeon, uh, like you said, he has been a prolific uh, goal scorer. And of course, uh, coming from that uh, background, we understand that he's a player that every team wants him. 
Earlier on in the season, uh, the likes of Manchester United and Arsenal also showed interest in the Nigerian. And uh, of course, we, st see, we saw what uh, the leadership of the club, that is uh, under Spalletti, doing everything possible to keep Vitor Simen away from he, even his own country. So uh, now that it's about signing uh, another deal, I think they will do everything to keep him. Just like we're having a discussion the other time, Victor Simi at this point should stay at Napoli and grow before he thinks of moving to any other club. And it's a good one, Napoli are, are stepping up the deal. All right, let's see. Probably they want to make real cash this time around, mm. like from Simi and other players. Canada has won the Davis Cup on international scene for the first time by beating Australia in the final in Malaga. In the opening singles, Robert Dennis Shapovalov, Valov, beg your pardon, made up for his defeat in the semi finals with a 6 2 6 4 win over Fantasy Kokinakis. His Canada teammate, Felix Oga Aliasime, the world number six, then beat Alex de Menel 6 3 6 4 to give his country an unassailable uh, 2 0 lead. After, from that, Canada we are appearing in only the second Davis Cup final. The first in 2019 brought defeats by Rafael Nadal of Spain, but they got their hands on the World Cup of Tennis on Sunday, 109 years after the first play in the tournament wow. at the expense of 28-time champions Australia. Shapovalov, ranked 18th in the world, raced into a 4-0 lead against Kokinokas and Kokinakis before the Australian got a game on the board. We move away from that particular one straight to other matters on uh, international scene. Just to let you know quickly that in the NFL, that's the football league there, our Philadelphia Eagles knocked Aaron Rodgers out of the game as they beat the Green Bay Packers 40 to 33 to strengthen their Super Bowl title credentials. And now we go straight to the World Cup. We saw Argentina at the mm. weekend bounced back from that loss. Saudi Arabia lost to Poland 2 0. Mm. France, the first team to reach the round of 16, and the only team. I've gotten to the run of 16, waiting for other teams. They sat as defending champions. Let's yeah. review Argentina uh, game against, uh, you know, against that side, uh, Mexico. Yes, Mexico. I think uh, the goalkeeper was really, really overhyped in that game. I, I, we saw uh, Lionel Messi had a lot of space. He had a lot of time. And uh, that's why he just one opportunity, just one strike he got, was able to uh, just give the Mexican side a run for their money. We saw him uh, doing very, very well from the 18, outside the 18 yard box. He shot just typical of Messi. And of course, we saw the, the, his teammates getting at uh, the ceiling, the, 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 making it to at the end of that game. So for now, Mexico have a lot of work to do. The, their first game, I think they drew in their first game. And of course, they lost their second one, so they'll be looking for a win in their game. Congratulations also to France. And like you said, not many teams achieve this feat. Even some countries, when they win a World Cup, at the end, you see them, they don't, they don't even qualify. Yes. They don't even qualify, but now we see France qualifying to the next round and being the first. So Japan also has qualified yesterday by, by beating Costa Rica. Mm. So I think the, 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 like the floor is open now. Spain, Germany. Germany with one point, one game to go. What's the lifeline that you see them qualifying? I see them qualifying. I see them winning that last So game. Spain will not qualify, is that what you're trying to say? No, Spain will qualify. Okay, so who actually? <laughs> I don't see Korea going anywhere, but I see Germany. If they, what they need now, they need to win by a huge margin. What they are known for, get a lot of goals. Okay. This is where they'll have to bring Quickly, it out. Morocco, 2 0 yesterday. Yes, uh, well, Belgium. Well, congratulations to the African side. No one saw that one coming. Belgium, Kevin De Bruyne was uh, stunned in that particular uh, game. He could not believe it. So, 2 0 from a, an African side. Well, I think, and this is a team that has been rated one of the best in the world when it comes to national football. So, Belgium. At that point, I, I don't think uh, they will really have to put up a fight. All right, they have to put up a fight to see themselves in the last 16. And this is the very much we have for you. The FIFA World Cup continues, of course, with matches going down today. Cameroon will be uh, busy, of course, uh, today to make sure they get a point or at least, or at most, a three points for them to see themselves in the next stage of the FIFA World Cup. I, I remember myself, Richard Badum, and with me in the studio has been. Yes, it has been Ivan and Luben, but watch out today, 11 o'clock, uh, where Cameroon will be taking on Serbia, and then later on, we'll see Brazil up against Switzerland, and later on, Portugal will be taking on Uruguay in a World, Club, World Cup match. Thank you, and this is the much we can bring on today's edition. Thank you Thank for you watching. For watching.